y'all have some fun starting off the match day we have cafe versus michigan tech and kettering michigan tech on the defense kettering on the attack it's gonna be interesting to see what the band phase will end up being for this map kettering is on a uh, solid run through the collegiate r6 winter right now in fact actually just losing out yesterday versus, versus oklahoma state if i remember correctly could be wrong there probably am but we're going to go with that. Thatcher off the board first from Michigan Tech. Makes sense. Thatcher is a pretty common ban these days. Coming out from Kettering, it's going to be a Jackal. Obviously, they want to have a little bit more of a roam setup. And getting rid of that Jackal will be very nice for their roamers. Make it a little bit harder to clear them. Waste a little bit more time on their defense. Malusi coming out from Kettering as the first defender ban. Makes sense. Malusi, even though she no longer has that one point, uh, that angled grip, however, not the 1.5. That was taken off a couple different operators. 
having not having that angle grip on Malusi doesn't really change how lethal she is. Those three Banshees make an awful lot of noise, and it's really annoying if you're attacking. Coming out for our final ban is going to be Mira. One of those ops that's been in the game for as long as you can remember, and has been banned for about as long as you can remember too. Starting off round one, it looks like we will be going up to the top floor. Start us out. Line up so far, I like. So I, I'm very curious to see if that Amari from Papa P is going to be a six pick or not. Uh, however, it is interesting to note the Alibi and the Warden coming out for uh, for, for Michigan Tech. It will be six to, Amar will be six to Ayana, however, so it was going to be a six just to bait. But that does mean MTU is going to have two shields at their disposal. Most likely it'll hold Pixel uh, and probably a bathroom shield as well. So we look here. You have the Yana, Nomad, Ace, Ash, and Zoe coming out from Kettering. Uh, Anomaly playing that Ace, that Hard Breach. I really like what's going on here with these ADSs from Biggie. So they are going to have that bathroom or that Pixel Shield. Uh, maybe not the bathroom shield, but they will have the Pixel Shield. They've already cleared out the shelf so they can get it up against that wall. Very helpful. We've got a bubble set up above our uh, B2. Pretty standard, uh, pretty standard in reinforcements going on right now. I like that. I like this prisma because it's gonna bait out a couple shots when they drop and open up top red. So it'll be, uh, it'll be pretty nice. And as the attack has gotten into the map, let's see what they are trying to figure out what to do. Buck having a little bit of interest on where to go. Looks like he may go snow door perhaps. He's just checking, getting ready for his entry, just trying to clear himself out. Meanwhile, Maestro is sitting in Cocktail with Legion. He's actually sitting in Freezer, rather. What a kill. I believe that was the Pixel player. A very early frag coming out for Kettering. A very good pick coming out. That 1.5 on the MPX is a very deadly weapon if in the right hands. Papa P calling out that bubble. Now with the man advantage, they're going to have somebody somebody sitting on that bubble. As we get into the round, the Zofia is currently sitting inside of Piano by Minibar. I believe she impacted herself, in fact. She knows there was someone right there. Unsure if the ADS has been burnt. Let's see, has that ADS, in fact, been burnt out? Two of them have been destroyed. But Derp is now down thanks to shots by Biggie from this bathroom shield like I was talking about earlier. So yes, they did in fact go with that bathroom shield. And now it is an even man count with a minute and a half to go. The defense is sitting in a good position right now. Over. Ash is getting shot at from below. Red will kill Anomaly, but Papa P will trade back on to Red. So it is a one for one trade. And we are now in a 3v3. Bomb is down, however, in Cigar. Snappy will take out Biggie. So it's a man advantage for the attack. And with TKLV being down, it is now a 1v3 for Esquire. It's going to be a very difficult situation for him to win. Especially with him being stuck inside of Freezer. Nades coming out from the Yana. Will blow in the bathroom. Not catch anyone. However, this Maestro is in a very tough position. Uh, position right now with not being able to get that his teammate up and right now it looks like that nade coming out will do no damage to actually that maestro but however yana is now out of nades they're going to have to just go for picks this maestro is trying to figure out what he can do he's, he's being held from two angles and that will be the round for kettering bucka finishing off Squire while papa k will finish off the legion that was downed very good opening attack coming out from Kettering. Uh, getting that opening pick on the Pixel player was very useful as it allowed them to be a little bit more, a little bit looser in their attack when figuring out what their next plan was. Michigan Tech not phased at all by that round. We'll go back up to the top and it looks like they're going to run the same lineup. Both teams running the same lineup so far. Noting 
that last round we had the bathroom shield as well as the pixel shield. I mentioned that before the round started. Having those two shields is really helpful because it makes them have to use a lot more utility just to be able to clear them out of piano and clear the pressure out of there. But obviously, Michigan Tech needs to be a little bit careful, uh, a little bit more careful rather, in uh, their positions as to not get picked out by something as cheeky as a reverse repel on that white window. Bubbles going in the same place so far. It looks like they'll both be in the same place. Uh, I like that trash bubble. I mentioned this last week when I was ca uh, casting UNTV uh, versus uh, Drexel Gold. This bubble right here in the corner of trash uh, can actually be very uh, very helpful when going for the default plant because you know normally a lot of teams will put a bubble on this pillar here uh, next to R1 or next to B1, uh, and not necessarily this uh, B2 bubble. But having this one here in trash makes it very uh, easy, or not easy per se, but uh, it's it's a little bit more hidden, so it can actually help out the defense a lot more. Starting off the attack for round two, Snappy just looking for a maestro or for a Valkyrie camp. If there was one, they do not they are not aware if there was a Valk six pick or not. So far, we have the Zofia on the roof. No sledge being brought by the attack. However, they will opt to just stick with the Yana for their nade presence, which is, I I think that's okay since they, it's a top floor uh, attack. The sledge isn't necessarily the most important op. I like the I like the Yana pick. You have the nades and you have the drones. They are aware. Warden is being very careful. Uh, Biggie will get an opening pick on the Papa K. I am going to assume it was on the... See so what it was. Biggie was did stop that Yana of uh, Papa K from. However, Bucka will be traded back. Uh, Bucka will trade that kill onto Biggie. However, so it's now a four for one minute forty left in the round, shaping up a lot like last round. To be honest, you had your opening pick on the pixel player. Uh, however, your pixel player is not dead yet. Uh, it's very important to notice. There are no attackers inside a piano. You notice you can note the one on repel. It was a thermite. He's now gotten off. This nomad uh, is trying to very desperately to hold this bathroom position just in case I rotate. But wow, what a shot from CJ going for that swing, knowing there was an opponent on that window. Great pick coming out for CJ. Gives Michigan Tech the man advantage going into the final minute of the round. He has fallen off that pixel shield onto that bathroom shield. As you can see, the Thermite is pushing up. Shots missed for CJ. Anomaly, not quite sure where to look just yet. But now they're aware that he is in this bathroom. Red will get derp, so it's now a 4v2. Both players are, in, players are now inside the piano room. Anomaly will get a trade onto CJ. However, Ash is now repelled into piano, or into piano, into heaven. And now all of a sudden it's a 2v2 as trades come out for Kettering. Or it's a 2v1 bot, rather. Red now stuck in the freezer. Did he get the diffuser? He will get the player on the diffuser. It's now up to Bucca to clutch it out. But he will not. Red will get the 1v2 clutch. And the round goes to Michigan Tech. We are now tied at 1-1 apiece. Going into round number three, going down to kitchen and service. Uh, now that we have successfully defended the top floor for Michigan Tech. Very interesting IQ pick coming out for Kettering. We will see if that gets locked. Uh, most likely to deal with those Valcams, with those Cade Claws. Those Claws can be a very big nuisance. A few six pick actually coming out from Snappy. Now on a kitchen site like this, it'll be very interesting to see how it works out. Because it can either go one of two ways. Either your Attackers fuse can get deep, some pucks deep into the kitchen. Or he's going to die. Not really get to do anything. And his utilities are mostly going to be pretty much wasted. Pretty standard defense coming out here from Michigan Tech operator wise. They do like their alibi it appears. As it gives them that secondary shield to use in a different part of the site. Reinforced. Ten seconds 
support search. Uh, holes coming out from defense. Uh, last round, the defense was very strong for Michigan Tech as they were able to get that opening pick instead of getting that opening death last round. Uh, and they were able to keep trading their man advantage back and forth until they won the round. You know, ultimately, maybe you know, next time you defend up top, you don't necessarily want them to lose that man advantage early. But it looks like Kettering will be opting to go onto the top and work their way down. They are. They may be. They may not be aware of this Valk sitting in reading right now. But it looks like they're just going to clear the f map one floor at a time. It looks like they are getting ready to take that control. They are joining the Whitehall. Will they find the alibi? They are now aware of the alibi on the top floor. Alibi will be rotating back to White just to try to get out of dodge just a little bit as the defense or as the attack starts to take the take their ground. And it is full drop in from the Yana, from the Buck. Yana clone actually coming in to try to clear out and bait out maybe uh, the alibi that had been sitting on site. Clone has been shot there. Oh, now where there's a Valkyrie on the second floor. No, she ran possibly back into the region. Not exactly sure where she might be. Bucca does see the Valkyrie. However, it will miss the shots. Dirt will trade out Biggie. Uh, is opening pick for Kettering for round three. Now we have full control of the second floor for the defense, and it looks like those fuse charges are going to be in full use now. Cade charged on, and look at that. Look at that new can opener, hard reach gadget. Not necessarily new, uh, but they will kind of catch up with that. Esquire does get a trade back onto Bucca though, and TT TKLV will get a trade onto Papa. It is now at 4v3 in favor of the defense. However, the fuse puck will get Esquire, and Derp will get one onto TKLV. Attack now in the advantage going into the final minute of the round with a 3v2. Be careful now not to lose their man advantage. Droning out the site. Kettering will be trying to finish out their clear. Are aware of the Jaeger's position. Not exactly aware where this alibi might be hiding. Very worried about a potential flight coming out from alibi. And she will not get the shot on to red dirt we'll get the trade however cj will kill anomaly but not before dirt can finish off cj big round coming out from dirt kettering winning round three going up 2-1 in this matchup Sorry about that, folks. Attackers it does appear the desktop audio issue is now fixed. Uh, so you should be able to hear game audio. I'm not really sure why it wasn't working before. I did have it enabled. Uh, but hopefully that should be fixed. The attackers have discovered the location of a bomb. Going into round number four. Michigan Tech hoping they can even the score once again at a 2-2 on their kitchen. Biggie looking for that one drone. Gonna put a valve cam there after trying to find that drone, chasing it upstairs. Attackers have located a bomb. Pretty default setup. Don't really see any. Uh, don't really see any uh, change in the setup that would immediately alert me from the defense. Besides the roamer presence, maybe the valve cams are in a different spot this round. But we are gonna get into the round now as the attack has made it into the lobby. Normally, I'm not going to go up directly to the roof, and instead opting to maybe go for a second floor entry after clearing the top. Be very wise. They are going to figure out that this Jaeger 
is playing on the second floor as well as the Valk. So you see CJ and Biggie playing playing mostly for time, maybe to get a pick or two. Red will get Papa though. So that's a very early opening kill for Red. Not sure where that was without that outside. Where was that kill exactly? Oh, it was outside the white window. So it looks like Red most likely got the guy on the reverse repel. Very open, a good opening pick for Michigan Tech. So far, each team with the opening pick has won the round. So if that's any consolation for Michigan Tech, they are looking good so far. Derp now waiting for the clear to come out for the rest of the second floor. As it looks like the defense has fallen back to sight. Half the round wasted. Got an opening pick. They're looking pretty good so far. But it does look like they not in the set up for me, rather going back to site. They fall into the red hall. Anomaly, however, will take out CJ. It was a good, good trade, a very late trade. But red will get the pick back. So now another favor, or in favor of the defense of Michigan Tech. minute left in the round and the attack is just now starting their destruction of the floor above the kitchen snappy is going to go ahead and start Attackers fusing above like he did last time in order to get that claw off open up that hatch for them all attackers currently on the middle floor while the defense is more spread out along the bait and the red hall side it looks like the valve is sitting in the coat waiting for a push down brown or down white perhaps but they are not going to stay in the back they're not going to sit in the back of the kitchen as they don't really want to, they don't really want to get Fuse Puck today. Do you believe that is all four Fuse Pucks out? All utility has been used on the side of Kettering. They're going to have to go for frags in the last 20 seconds of this round. It looks like Snappy is going to have to drop down the hatch in order to get... Oh, but what is this? Red is now, it's now flanked up, but I do believe they're aware of it. But Red will get the shot onto Bucca. Is now or never. Snappy dropping the hatch. Ten seconds to go. Attackers Biggie will take out Derp. That is bombed down. Snappy now in a 1v4 Five insight with four remaining. seconds left. Snappy will get a kill onto Biggie, but it will be utterly meaningless in the long run. As Michigan Operators, Tech does keep the diffuser time. from going down in the bomb site, winning off a time. With three players still up, Michigan Tech will take the round. It's a good hold from Michigan Tech. A lot of uh, good, uh, good adaptations coming out uh, from Michigan Tech with the attack of Kettering. This should be a very close game in the long run, so it doesn't really surprise me to see what we're seeing. The opening picks going back and forth are very interesting because uh, it shows that Michigan Tech is not afraid to try to stop that opening pick from going against their favor. Defenders, protect your bombs. Once again, we're back on the top attackers. floor. Now that has reopened after a two-site rotation. Uh, same lineup coming out from Michigan Tech. They do like what they're bringing. They're going to keep running it. They like the two shields. Bomb having that bathroom and that pixel shield is very beneficial for them. It allows them to get a lot more pressure inside the piano room. Last time we came up here. So round one we came up here. CJ got taken off on the opening pick by the Papa Papa P from that white stairs window. Second round, Papa P was the first pick by Biggie. Uh, you know, the first pick's going back and forth. Uh, it's, it's very interesting because it shows it shows that each team is not uh, very static. They are dynamic. They do like to change what they're doing. Figure out how to fix it. A little bit of team damage coming up from Michigan Tech. It is what it is. About 5 HP. It's kind of stuck in the long run. May cost, uh, may cost a gunfight at the very end of the day, but we are unsure. Now as the attack has gotten into the building does look like we're going to start things off on the roof. Anomaly coming up, getting ready to start droning. No immediate White Stairs presence coming from the attack this round. They are aware that they will try to watch that. Oh, however, I, as I say that, does look like Papa P will try to go for that white window. He may get picked off of this if he's not being careful. He's just going to open and try to leave. Just try to put a little bit of pressure on that pixel player. Make them watch their back. But he will open that window and jet does not want to be an opening pick and cause the round loss for Kettering. Not a clone now going in through Cigar has cleared that Nubalk and Heaven potentially are clear. 
Yana Clone in the middle of sight right now, just trying to get some more info. It's all the way through Freezer before dying to the uh, Freezer in the Maestro in deep freeze. Now has a Thermite playing inside a mini bar. They're gonna go for the burning, the ADS. One, two, three. One shield down, one more in the bathroom. That one's also down, forcing the Warden of CJ to try to hold out inside of the freezer now. And just like that, you have full piano control for Kettery. Bucka gonna go very aggressive on that hat. Ash will not win the fight against CJ. CJ getting the opening pick, only losing about 35 HP. Aware now of Nomad, of Snappy on that window. CJ will just hold now inside. As he is aware now that there is a Zofia of Derp on New Balk. Freezer wall now being opened by the attack. It's going to be a very deadly Derp off. Uh, Derp being picked up by Ren, however, that alibi can be very useful. CJ being lit to 1 HP, not very helpful for him. However, Snappy will get Biggie. And Snappy will get a double kill on the CJ. Papa P going down to Esquire now as their trades come out. Now a 2v3, a favor in the defenders. Esquire blinded by a flash, downed, taken out by Anomaly. 2v2 for the attack. Red, however, will bring it back. A 2v1 now. And the Bailiff will come out. Red with the clutch. Red having a massive game so far. Red is being very red hot when it comes to these gunfights. Not afraid to engage. Most of the time, winning those duels that he's in. Michigan Tech will take... Their third round, second in a row. First time any team has been able to stream more than one back-to-back. -back. For the final round of Michigan Tech's defense, we'll be opting to go to the reading room and fireplace hall bomb sites. Tra traditional third site for a lot of college teams, maybe not in the upper leagues, but collegiate. A lot of teams like to hit up reading and fireplace as their tertiary, maybe not their secondary. Be seeing an IQ coming out once again. Yana will be sixth off to a Zofia, so off the nades, onto the impacts. Uh, a little Defenders bit more utility on that Zofia when it comes to clearing players out. Pretty standard defense, it looks like, coming out from the defense. Nothing too unusual besides, again, that alibi. Red, 10 kills. At least we know that he's had a hell of a game so far. Have located a bomb. Red has been doing God's work on this map, making sure his team does not lose rounds that maybe it should in fact have lost. It's very deadly with that MX4 Storm. Does not look like he wants to stop anytime soon. But this will be the ultimate test for Michigan Tech. Are they gonna go into their attack half up 4-2 or are they gonna go at a tie 3-3? If you're Kettering, you're going to want to get that third round as it's going to make your defense half a whole lot easier. Red aware that there's some, is someone spamming in through the white, white hall garage. It's going to be interesting. Does, will he decide to go for that gunfight? However, he will look, but he's going to try. Well, maybe he won't. Red. He is aware that there's someone out. Here's the nomad charge. Go off. The snappy is going to ascend up. It's going to look, see if he maybe he can find it, but he will opt instead just to fall back upstairs. Meanwhile, we have the attack starting to clear out the top floor. Bucca is on that rappel, hoping to try to find a kick. He's going to go ahead and pop that shield and cocktail, just trying to get a little bit of that clear done into the top where we go for Kettering as they clear out through the bar through the freezer. Zofia Papa K is just in, but are they aware of this Zofia or this Jaeger? What a C4 from Biggie. Bucka will get TKLV and CJ will get dirt, but it's now a 4v3 in favor of the defense. What seemed like a really great entry from Kettering turned right on their heels and all of a sudden Michigan Tech is up by one with a minute and a half left in the round. You do have Anomaly still here inside the freezer. Gonna go ahead and try to open up that tarp wall. It does look like it will be open. Bucka on the rappel will catch out CJ as he tries to swing Anomaly. Great teamwork coming out from Kettering. Great holds. Now down to a 3v3. 
attack has one minute left to start working on their destruction try to get an attack game plan set out for this bomb red just daring someone to try to come down red stairs very awfully name as that is his domain meanwhile Bucca has now entered the building it's great to see him in here half health uh he is maybe not in the best position for a gunfight uh, especially as he hits a Prisma as they now have his location for 5 ticks. But with the last 30 seconds, Red is now on the flank. But I do believe it is being it is heard by Snappy. Red opting to just fall back and wait for the push. As the site gets ready for... As the attack gets ready for it, execute. Anomaly will drop with the bomb the into the waiting the arms of... Uh, uh, Esquire. Esquire with the second on the Snappy and Biggie with the final kill on the Bucca. Michigan Tech will go up 4-2 on their defense round and a really strong hold on this reading defense. Great shot there coming out from Biggie onto the Ash of Bucca to finish off that round. However, now it is Kettering's turn in the defense driver seat. This is Cafe. It is a defender sided map. You're looking for an average 4-2 Anything less than that, you're looking scared, you're looking worried going into your attack half. Anything more, that's just great. Immediately, we'll see an Ace and a Maverick and a Twitch come out from Michigan Tech. Those are not ops we saw come out from Kettering. And we'll be actually going to Reading and Fireplace again. Kettering opting that as their primary bombsite, not their tertiary. Uh, IQ will be swapped off to a Zofia by Red. I to note that if red has been protect your bomb this red hot as alibi attack. six rounds in a row 10 kills over six rounds as an alibi it'll be very interesting to see what he gets done with that ellen with that ar in his hands so this, this setup looks pretty similar in design to Michigan Tech's. Uh, but i do like this goyo pick coming out from Kettering. I believe it uh, allows them to get a little bit more control, hold a little bit harder. So they will, so interesting enough, Kettering will be opting to give up this entire bar side, the entire bar side, uh, unless they opt to maybe open up some of the railings and walk across. Uh, other than that, very interesting. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about that. Those Goyo shields. Look for those Goyo shields. They both have been placed down, but I'm not exactly sure where just yet. Are they on the top floor, perhaps? Not exactly sure where they've been placed down, to be honest. But we are 30 seconds into the round. Twitch looks like she is going to try to come in, maybe through bottom white. Does hear the Goyo. Now where there is someone in the basement, going to get on her second drone. They have spotted out the Goyo. They have confirmed that he is in the in the first floor of Cafe running towards Red. Maybe not exactly sure he's by Whiskey. But the Goyo does appear to want to stay down and contest what he can. Meanwhile, you have the entry coming in from the attack at Kettering. Taking out the taking out the, the defense, taking out their control throughout the top floor. Just wanting to get as much as they can where where they can. Aware of the castle's position now at the top of white. Bucca holding a very tight angle. One castle barricade will go down, forcing Bucca to bomb just, located by attackers. Just the push back a little bit on to the tarps. Red will get the opening pick onto Derp. Red, once again, red hot. That is your Goyo down. 1C4 off the board. CJ will get a second on to Anomalies. Now also your smoke. You're looking... That's a very bad kill to have in the middle of sight nonetheless. Bucca and Biggie will go head to head. Bucca will take out TKLV, but Biggie will get an immediate trade back on the Bucca. Papa P will take out Biggie, so it's just trades back and forth, back and forth. Now, Michigan Tech looking in a very strong position going into these final minutes. Papa P is sitting in this position here inside of Tarps. Going to try to swing on the switch. We'll get the kill on a CJ. Now a 2v2. Papa P very aware, but 
will not get the Changing pick onto Esquire. Esquire instead leveling the man advantage in their favor. All left up to snapping out in a 2v1. And with Michigan Tech bomb. going to plant the bomb. Esquire doing a great job on that. Type in those, type in those numbers. But Snappy is going to try to flank. The holding shift W just a little bit too long. Red hearing him out, getting the first and final pick. Red once again being a big, a big player for Michigan Tech. And with our first, all right, looks like we are going to go into a pause while while King uh, Kittering does try to fix some issues with their voice protocols. Uh, let's talk about that last round a little bit. So, Michigan Tech getting that opening pick, Red specifically getting that opening pick onto Derp down in the first floor. Uh, very, very big opening pick as your see your uh, C4 is off the board. As your only C4 actually, they only had the one C4 to try to stop any plant with. And not to mention that, but their smoke died in the middle of sight. I'm, a, I'm going to assume the Twitch opened up a little bit of the floorboards, or someone opened up a little bit of the floorboards, and that smoke just got caught out in a very unfortunate place. But that was all your smoke grenades gone. So what would have been your denial in the last 30 seconds of the round got taken out very early. Looks like we are good to go back on the timer. So we will resume. Having that pause feature is very nice. Can't quite tell what Bucka wants to pause again. All right, that's, uh, looked like we were good to go, but I guess we cannot go just yet as they try to get their Discord working once again. But so far, almost all operators are locked in. Only one's not being locked in right now actually is, is going to be uh, Bucka's Castle, I'm assuming, as they try to fix their Discord issues. But as we go, we are now going to go up to top floor. Obviously, Kettering didn't really like how that. Yes, that is exactly what happened, CJ. Thank you. Uh, but yes, so Kettering not really happy on how that reading defense went. So they're going to go up to the top floor. It looks like now pretty much the same lineup as last time, but you do have a Wamai instead of a Mute. Uh, I do like the Wamai Jaeger combo. Uh, you will be able to use those Magnets in addition to the ADS to try to defend those Goyal Shields and that Smoke Shield uh, for as long as you can, try to hold off a bunch of pressure coming from Piano. Meanwhile, uh, the Maverick pick I think is really interesting on Cafe. They may not be, out there, they are not aware that it's a top floor defense, but they could speculate what the next round would look like. But bringing the map is a little interesting, but it does give you a backup in case your ace were to die a very tragic early death before he gets the wall open. Uh, you can map a little circle into Red Hall from Piano. But, uh, however, you're not really going to want to use your Mav for opening up that freezer wall. It makes you, you're very vul vulnerable when you do it. Not to mention with just the long angles, especially when you go for the bottom, your little footsies are exposed. And I can see a defender with a nice gun, such as Umai or Jaeger. Uh, maybe even Castle with that 1.5 just going for your feet. We are good to go into the round now. Everything been locked in. Let us get underway with round number Attackers eight. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Michigan Tech up 5-2, winning their first round on defense. Or on their attack, rather. Kettering losing their first round on defense. Not great for them. They're going to have to bring it all the way back now if they want to be able to win this. They cannot lose another round if they want to avoid overtime. Michigan Tech looking very strong right now. In the, definitely in the driver's seat lead going to their second attack round. Goyo Shield being brought to try to get a little bit of leverage into Piano. Make the attack of Michigan Tech a little bit scared to push in as they don't want to get peaked from behind the shield. As we all know, those deployable slits, those deployable shields with those slits are very un, very not fun to, very unenjoyable per se, uh, to go up against. A lot of reconstruction coming out from Kettering. They want to get all the sight lines open. They want to be able to see the entire world from where they stand. Now it looks like what they will be ready to do. Meanwhile, the attack has now entered the map. Going to head up to the roof. It is cafe after all. You got to clear top down. That's just how the map works. 
Ashkin Tech. Very lucky that the devs decided to postpone uh, looking into the reinforced hatch. Very interesting, opting to use the Maverick Siri Torch instead of a breaching charge to go for that second hatch on top red. Uh, a little bit of a waste of utility, maybe. Uh, but they are now aware of Derp's presence after a drone. Uh, red may or may not have seen the Derp cross through 90, but he will drop into top red. CJ dropping move out, getting a very good opening pick, but it will be very quickly traded. Bucka will trade out CJ after Papa B was taken out. A charge now going down onto the red, uh, top red wall. Bucka still trying to hold this position in the pixel shield. However, he has been droned. Flash is coming out to burn the ADS. I'm sure, Nade will be following very soon. Looks like all the Flash is burned about from uh, Michigan Tech, but the first nade will not be uh, wasted on a ADS or a Wumai Magnet. One shield down. Uh, looks like two possibly remain. Jaeger playing behind the one inside of Freezer. Nolly will take out Biggie. Red will take out Derp. Just trades back and forth. Now a 3v3 between the two teams. Kettering not in the worst position. Uh, I bet they could have they're actually at the health advantage. No, they don't. They, have, they are at a slight health disadvantage uh, right now. TKLV not wanting to get too aggressive as this Jaeger is holding a very tight angle in Freezer. Anomaly getting ready to start smoking as we are in the final 45 seconds of the round. First smoke will go out as they try to stop the play in the site. Snappy being... Wanting, we're just daring someone to come in for both Zofia explosives wasted Zofia out of utility no more nades the only way they can get this shield gone is if they ace charge but with 25 seconds left the time is really not there for Michigan Tech Kettering looking to hold this round down Red actually pushing through the middle of bar trying to go for a pick Bucka will take out TKLV but Red will take out Anomaly We'll get the secondary onto Snappy. It's now all up to Bucka in a 2v1. Bomb will go down. Bucka will get Esquire. It's now a 1v1 Castle versus a Zofia. But Bucka is one shot from death with Red's gun. So he must be very careful in this position if he wants to get that 1v2 clutch. Gonna wrap around now to New Balk. Does take out the drone watching. Waiting to call out. Red playing very passively. Playing this very smart. Uh... Does not want to get a little bit uh, over aggressive and perhaps lose a gunfight. Red does get end up getting the pick on the Bucka. Michigan Tech going on to match point on the back of a very solid execute uh, coming out. Red carrying this entire team on his back. Say, you know what? I want to win so bad today. I might drop 20. And he is on track to do that if he gets another a few more kills in the next round. He's currently sitting at 16 kills. Kettering University, uh, they're looking a little sluggish on their defense. Going to drop down to Kitchen, try to change things up. Something's not working, so they got to make a change. Bucca onto the Vigil, as it appears it will be uh, very good for the roam potential. Just try to avoid the drones, because Kettering, or because Michigan Tech does like their drones. They're bringing them out very well. Actually being sixth on to the Cap Can, just try to slow down the entry from Michigan Tech. And Red will six on to the Twitch off of the Zofia. Uh, yeah, you know, not a bad six pick. I think the Twitch will counter the Capkin pretty well because the Attackers Twitch drone, when it is trying to clear some utility, will be able to clear some of those Capkin traps depending on where they are placed in the map. But the uh, very, very unorthodox pick, you don't really see the Capkin too often. Uh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very, some very nice feedback from a train. Uh, you'd love to hear that. Sorry about your ears. Michigan Tech really wanting to put this away here, heading onto map two, uh, their map pick. They really want to take Kettering's map pick, uh, and if they do, it'll be very solid for them in a 7-2 fashion. Uh, Michigan Tech is not a team to be played with right now. They will take what they want. They will not step till they are on the top. We're now into the round as the attackers of Michigan Tech have spawned in. Very interesting to figure out what they will do. Right now, it just looks like they're all going to get on cams. 
Every single one of them, except for CJ, will be on camp right now, just trying to get a little bit of information on where the attack is. CJ trying to get a very uh, crisp shot through the drone hole. As I say that, he will get on drone too. Every single attacker at some point getting on drones right now, just to try to clear a little bit of the clear a little bit of space out, trying to make sure we we'll see what they can get for free. Red getting very aggressive, already going try, maybe trying to peek into prep. Hits the shield, will back off for just a little bit. They are going to try to clear out some of that utility before they go for the pop in that shield. Don't want to waste too many flashes too early. Like Red will go for that first Electric Claw. Unsure if Kate has one in his pocket. He does not. It's actually been placed on the freezer wall. So, uh, Esquire will be able to get this wall open very quickly. There you go. The first Ace going out onto the wall. Esquire getting a second one on. Very fast opening of a wall for the attack. Uh, putting this smoke of Anomaly in a very poor position. However, the Goyle Shield and the Deployable Shield have not been dealt with, so they, the defense still has pretty leverageable positions now. Anomaly playing very close on the shield, just trying. CJ will get the opening pick on the pop-up B. Bucka will trade off. CJ getting a second on a Snappy. Now in, in man advantage in favor of the attack. Coming to fall back for a little bit because of the smoke from Anomaly. Biggie will get a kill onto Bucka. It's now a 4v2 in favor of Michigan Tech. This is looking very good if you're a Michigan Tech fan. Very poor if you're a Kettering fan. CJ taking a little bit of damage from that smoke, babe. Red, though, is flanking deep. Does not get the kill onto Dirt. Esquire, CJ closing it out. 7 2 in favor of Michigan Tech on Kettering's map pick. Cafe over in a snap. We'll be heading over to Villa soon. And if Kettering wants to win the series, they're going to have to bring it back on Villa and bring us to Oregon. Great map coming out for Michigan Tech. Very strong showing from them so far. We'll be back on Cafe after this break.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to our Face It Collegiate Championship game of the night. We have Michigan Tech versus Kettering on to map number two. We're heading off into the great old Italian countryside of Villa after Michigan Tech being a very dominant in uh, Kettering's map pick of Cafe, a 7-2 win coming out for them. Starting off right now, we will have Michigan Tech, uh, Kettering rather, banning off Thatcher to begin with. Uh, another Thatcher ban coming out as the first ban of the night for the map. Poor Thatcher, never really getting any play anymore. Everyone hates him. He's not loved. Second ban coming out, Jackal ban, the exact same bans as last time. His last map. Both those ops not receiving any love tonight. Uh, very unfortunate for them. We will not see them in play at all. Michigan Tech will be banning the next defender. We'll see what that ends up being. As a reminder, Aruni and Tachanka not available for play tonight, uh, as are the current rule set. Mira will be banned. And it looks like Echo may be playable once again. Will we see him? That is the question. Alibi coming out from Kettering. Target ban onto Red. No Alibi for him. No MX4 Storm. We will see how that goes. How Red will be able to do without that. Going into... So far, yeah. So that Alibi ban coming out. Very targeted as uh, Red went had 10 kills at the end of the first half after starting on Alibi for every single round. Starting off, it looks like we will be starting in Trophy Statuary as Kettering has opted to go. We were going to see the Echo, however, a 6-pick onto the Frost and a 6-pick six six from the Nomad to perhaps the IQ coming out to get those Kate Electro Claws. The Goyo is going to be sticking around. It has been a common theme from Kettering. They do like their Goyo. Gives for those extra shields. That effect is pretty nice too. Your bombs from being defused by attackers. You know, we have the frost. Frost not seen too often in competitive play. However, uh, after the uh, site reworks coming out in Shadow Legacy, Frost now having that 1.5 uh, very makes her gun very versatile. Maybe not the highest fire rate, but that 1.5 is extremely handy. It allows you to get into a little bit more long range engagements, not really stuck to just a 1x. And having that shield, in addition to that sh secondary shotgun, uh, makes sure similar to Smoke in the role that he plays. Maybe not necessarily uh, the same role as obviously Five Smoke plays left. more for the time denial, for the plant denial. Frost plays for more of an entry denial role. Um, but interesting enough, Papa P will not be running the 1.5, actually running the reflex. So. Uh, forget everything I said about that 1.5 on Frost, as it will not be available this round. Starting off, we do see the attack of Michigan Tech running a Maverick. On this map, you know, Maverick not too too bad. I personally would run, you know, a Humbana, as it allows you, you can you can bait out some impact tricks more. But the Mav does have the nades, and they will need the nades for all four shields that Kettering has brought. Are aware of the smoke of Buck up playing inside of the closet. Tech is going to try to burn this ADS and possibly nade him out. CJ playing below already, as well as the IQ trying to get the smoke out of the closet. Attackers One smoke nade out already. CJ playing very aggressively down below, trying to find. They try to get a drone up through the four hole. Not exactly happened. Esquire will get Bucca, however. Takes a lot of HP damage, but smoke is down. Man advantage for Michigan Tech. A very big opening kill for them. Exactly what they needed to start this round off. The Jaeger of Snappy playing tight on this shield here in concrete. Just trying to get up another just trying to get a pick back onto the attack. We'll get stunned up by that Zoe. Shield taken out in a very poor position now. He's gotta be very careful in what he does, otherwise he may get taken out. Holding this angle very aggressively. He's not he's just waiting for someone to come his way. Papa P will get us uh, get a pick onto CJ though. It is a trade desperately needed. Uh, not sure where that kill was, if it was not 90. TKLV will trade that back onto Snappy, however. He's now gonna go for a nade on the wall. Uh, Mav on the wall rather. Uh, maybe he is going to get over. Red will take out anomaly. 
4v2 advantage. Nade coming over the wall, trying to get anything up maybe I next to it. We're not getting anything just to make sure there's nothing on the wall. TKLV, we're gonna pick on the derp. Now it's all now all up to Papa P. We'll have to ace to clutch. Gets the first pick. Gets the second. Now 1v2. This is extremely doable, in fact. Papa P in a very fortunate position. Look at the third. Now all down to Biggie. Papa P looking very sharp to close out this 1v4 ace clutch. Papa P in Asher right now. Just going to try to drone out using the last 30 seconds he has. Just trying to get a little bit of intel on the location of Papa P as he's not exactly sure where he rotated to. Do not believe he has seen Papa P uh, as he is around that corner. But Biggie is going to have to do something and do something quick. We'll pick Attackers up the diffuser, the watching the statue door, not exactly sure where he has to go. to go. Gonna sit in the bomb chassis, Ten start the plant. Back. Papa P will now push up, but Biggie is in fact sticking that Five plant. Biggie, Papa P will get the 1v5 ace clutch. Amazing way for Kettering to start off this map. Exactly what they needed after last map. Papa P doing great work on that frost. Doesn't even need the 1.5. He'll get all five kills regardless. Great round coming out from Papa P specifically. Not necessarily Kettering as a whole, but Papa P really saving their butts. Doing everything he can. Putting them in his backpack, much like Red did last game. Kettering after winning that will opt to go over to Aviator Games as they cannot repeat Trophy Stature for another two rounds. Michigan Tech ought to probably kicking themselves uh, after that round, letting that Frost 1v4 ace clutch them. Uh, they were very, uh, very, very, uh, very single file, just kind of like walking in, except they were very spread out. But Nomad will be sixth off. Attackers need to locate the six on to rather. Uh, we'll see the Nomad come back out this round. Maybe to put some of those air jabs on the flank so they do not get 1v5'd once again. But the defense will now go over to Aviator Games. The first Mozzie coming out. Running that Commando. Not running that Roni. Likes having the more ammo, the more damage. As, uh, you know, on that Roni, you may have that 1.5. But if you don't hit your shots, you're going to run out of bullets real quick. And you're going to be in a real bad situation come gunfight time. Pretty typical defense coming out so far. Reinforcements seem pretty average. However, actually, now that I say that, the aviator walls are still completely soft. But it does look like uh, Anomaly has noticed that and it says, Guys, we need to reinforce our walls. Help me out here. We'll get those reinforced. No soft aviator walls. Nothing crazy coming out. No shield holding top main, even though they actually do not have a shield. But they do have three C4s. That's a lot of explosive power coming out. From Kettering. Attack now in well into the round. Is it they do look like they want to go for more of a study push. Maverick droning in, a couple flashes go out. Then air jab to follow just to make sure the air jab doesn't get caught by an ADS. DJ making sure no one wants no one's gonna come into the into, into study to, to challenge him. That's his job. For IQ right now below. I'm gonna look for trying to get some of these uh electric claws off the wall. You have the one. I like I like this play with that electric ball. Attackers you cannot shoot it from below. You have to go from bus to be able to see that. Another electric claw. C4 out. Will miss its target though. They are going to have to nade. That bubble doing shortening around of damage. A quarter of TKLV's health. Papa P. Uh, you know, bubble obviously you know wasn't the most useful. But Derp will get the opening pick onto CJ. Your Nomad is now dead. That is a big pick for Kettering. Bucka getting a follow-up onto Biggie. That is huge. Dirt going for another Attackers fight. Gets that kill. Esquire down. Now a 5v2. TKLV and Red all to them to try to win this round in Michigan Tech's favor. Villa important to note. It's not the most defender-sided map in the pool. TKLV very unlucky there, missing the head of the Jaeger Bucka just by a few inches. Wants to try to nade this Jaeger out. Not aware that he has crossed. Nade will not connect with anything. Shappy does get red. Red just rushing in from sight. Start rushing in from bust. And Bucka will finish off TKLV. Lawless round coming out for round two 
from Kenner University. They're starting off very strong on this defensive half, something they were not able to do while they were on cafe. Michigan Tech needs to slow it down just a little bit, do a little bit more drone work, try to push with the drone, play together, because it seems right now uh, Michigan Tech is playing very solo, and uh, it's not helping their cause too much, as Kettering, is being, Kettering wants to be very aggressive, from what it seems, on this defense. Uh, and it is working out for them so far. They are get, they're getting their picks, they're winning their gunfights. Uh, you know, first you have an ace from Papa, then you have a flawless round. Uh, it's looking good. It's looking good if you're a Kettering fan, right, so far. Now going into Dining Kitchen, the Frost will be 6 to a Pulse, as is the standard. You will 6-pick your Pulse on Dining, and you know, you, everyone knows this. Uh, yeah, Mav will be 6 off to the sledge because they are aware that it is the tertiary site time. It is time to go to our first floor, and they needed some more soft destruction. Derp sicking on the Scoyo, his favorite off from last map, his favorite off so far this map. Uh, he's liking that Vector, liking these shields. Uh, Gonna have another one on Bucca. Three shields overall with three more C4s to boot. Four more C4s to boot. Actually, pardon me. Uh, a lot of explosives. They're really gonna try to deny some of this top play. Uh, try to get rid of some of those attackers from opening up the floors above them. Ten seconds to go. Does look like, based on this drone positioning, it may be a. Five seconds to insertion. There may be some take coming in from living if you want to judge off of those drones. Attackers are moving Meanwhile, you have two drones upstairs in study and in vault. Uh, so it does look like it will be a south to north push on both floors uh, as the attack tries to clear out the roam. Immediately, we see some attackers on the drone. IQ's trying to just drone out this first floor lobby area, making sure there's no one waiting for an art does look like I, your IQ will, maybe even your sledge, will go in through the art room. A lot of droning coming out. Actually, they want to make sure every single angle is clear before they hop in. But that is alright because the rest of your attack is sitting pretty inside of sight. Smoke roaming around upstairs. Interesting that you're going to have Buckaby playing this uh, when he could be denying the around with smokes, but he's being very aggressive upstairs. I would have personally sent your Goyo or, your, or your, even your Kate up. Uh, but Anomaly will get the first pick on the TKLV as your sledge down. That's a very poor, very poor peak from TKLV. That is almost all of your, your soft destruction gone. All you're, you're leaving that up to Biggie with three breach charges now. Not very great if you're Michigan Tech. If you're a Kettering player or a fan, you're feeling real good now. But it almost looks like the, this Nomad of CJ is just going for broke inside of sight. Does a little bit of damage. It doesn't do any damage, actually. He takes 25, but will not hit a single shot. This pulse now pulsing him inside. Uh, but honestly, Michigan Tech not looking too great on their attacks right now. Meanwhile, Bucca is still upstairs. He's going to open up. It looks like he's going to open up that hatch. But CJ is... Bucka will get red as red tries to just walk into the site. Where trades come back and forth, and, all, and now it's a 2v3. I mean, it's extremely doable for Michigan Tech. 2v2 now. CJ gets some massive picks, uh, but they got to be real careful. It's a smoke and a mute versus your ace a and your nomad. You're not looking too great if you are the attack. CJ actually popping that Goyo shield. Going to really trap his teammate inside of laundry, to be honest. CJ aware that there's a player pushing Memo. One smoke out, two left. But Snappy is still playing inside a pantry. He will have to come out and fight at some point. Uh, but Esquire will try to bait out the plant while CJ protects him. But one C4, C4 comes out, actually gets shot. If it didn't get shot, he might have killed Snappy there, actually. But CJ will get the pick. CJ, I believe, possibly looking for the ace. Will not happen. Esquire will get the final kill onto the smoke of Bucca. Bucka once again playing upstairs into smoke. I'm not really sure that's the play. Honestly, if you want to send a shotgun upstairs, send your mute. But I think your smoke needs to be playing uh, on site uh, to deny some of that play. Those smoke grenades were uh, very poorly used. Honestly, uh, Michigan Tech really winning around there. I don't know if they should have. But the score now 1-2 in favor of Kettering. Michigan Tech trying to get on the comeback. Trying to get some attack rounds under their belt before they head into their defensive half.
Uh, very interesting Oryx pick coming out from Kettering. Will be sixed off, however, onto the smoke. The Frost will stay, though. Uh, Papa P wants to run it back. Wants to get another five. It looks like we are getting set up to head back up to Trophy Statuary. Now, this round, last time, it should absolutely have not gone in favor Defending of Kettering. Uh, except Papa P did God's work, putting his team on his back, said, Don't worry, I got this. 1v4 clutch? Easy. And that's what he did. He pulled it off. He got the 1v4, got the ace clutch, got the defuse. He's doing it all. Without a 1.5, that uh, being said. Sticking to that reflex on his own. Setup seems pretty similar. You have a little bit of an extension out here into the living room library. No reinforcements dedicated. Not the living room library. Sorry, AVR yeah, games. Uh, not the living room library is the first floor. Uh, however, there are the, actually there will be a couple of reinforcements. It looks like dedicated over here. Uh, you will have one or two players playing Attackers over here. A lot more reinforcements than I thought were being dedicated over here. Uh, it looks like looks like four will be. Interesting play from the smoke here. Wanting to try to pull a little bit of pressure below, even though he's going to be pressured from uh, from the windows, it, most likely. You can see the Nomad, the Ash, and the Maverick all getting ready to try to pressure the smoke out, much like last round. However, uh, I do believe Bucka was able to get trade. Bucka being very aggressive, but will not get anything as CJ was still on the repel. That is your smoke down. Bucket playing very aggressive. Uh, you're really not working out in his favor so far this map. But great kill from CJ. One nade, one nade, one uh, No, not sure not yet. Ooh, what a great shot from Snappy. Uh, we'll get TKLV in the hall, in the closet actually. Snappy now full white as flashes come out. That's, and soon the Asher will come out for the shield. There he goes. Utility being dropped left and right, forcing Snappy to fall back. Red now has a drone. Drone through bathroom, drone into Astro. Just trying to get a little bit of information on where the players of Kettering might be playing. Big E still below, trying to get those Cade Claws off the wall. Was he successful with that? Uh, he has not been successful yet, but it looks like he's just droning, just trying to clear his own, just so he knows he is okay to go for it. Snappy with another kill on a CJ. Snappy doing a real big work for Kettering in this round. Making sure they're not losing that man advantage. Getting it back when they do lose it. Playing a very, uh, very, very smart what he's doing. Looks like Red is now repelled on the Astro when they're trying to find a pick. Not really sure he's going to find anything there. Biggie now worked his way up. Red will not get the kill onto the Goyo of... Derp, though. Derp instead will fry Biggie, and that has now brought it even more in the favor of Kettering, and now in a 4v2 position with the final 40 seconds above on us. Red and Esquire now just chilling in Master, trying to do anything that they can. Red with a great pick on the Derp, now in a 4 in a 2v3, uh, but this next kill here will be very important. Red will get the kill on a pop of P. What a shot from Red. It's now a 2v2 with 20 seconds left. This is extremely doable for uh, Michigan Tech. And for Snappy playing very close on this concrete wall. And Anomaly playing on the bit of the reinforcement inside the Astro. Snappy will get the kill on just Squire. And now it's all up to Red. We'll get the down onto the Kate of Anomaly, but does not know where this Jaeger is. All Snappy has to do is survive, and it looks like he will. He will survive in the closet. Will Red get it in time? He will not. Kettering will win the round on time. Great attempt from Red to try to clutch the round out, but just a little bit too slow in trying to make it to the Jaeger on time. Kettering now up 3-1 on their defense. Um, Kettering playing on the defense much better than they were on Cafe. Uh, looks like they do want to stay in this match. They don't want to lose it in two. They want to bring it to three maps. Keep it close. Uh, clo see, it's actually closer than it was last game already as Kettering has won more rounds. Back to Aviator Games we go. Back comes out the Mozzie from Derp. Back comes out the... Well, it's a pretty, pretty similar lineup to what uh, Michigan Tech's been running the last few rounds. 
I like this. The Dokubi coming off of the map at the last second. Dokubi trying to clear those roamers out for Michigan Tech. Those phone locate, calls, very annoying. Not only can. that, but once you kill someone, they drop a little phone, get some cams. Free intel right there if you're a Dokubi player. You will hide Bubbles Lou look like they'll be going above the hatch again. And we will be seeing somewhat of a repeat, it looks like, from the last Aviator game site. But it's going to be interesting. Oh, that's very interesting. I don't know if TKLB uh, had previously set up his loadout, but he will be running the boss G, it appears. Uh, so since it was a last minute pick, he was not able to adjust his loadouts. Uh, very unfortunate if he was hoping to have that MK14 DMR. But he will have to go with the boss G this round. Look at that. He's got the 2.5 on the boss G with the SMG-12. Looks like he's probably just going to use the SMG-12 most of the round. Uh, going to try to take most of his engagements at close range, though, since he uh, does have that boss G with that 2.5. Could be wrong. Maybe TKLV did want the boss G, but uh, I can tell you for a fact I would not want that boss G. Be interesting to see... One drone coming out, being taken by the Mozzie. Will be shot instantly, but that's Intel denied. The Mozzie of Dirt playing very challenging. Oh, what a shot. TKLV taken down. Boss G or not, won't really matter. No phone calls off. Uh, and TKLV is dead off of a very, very patient one tap from Dirt. He was waiting for waiting for TKLV to just line up, stop moving so he could get that clean shot. Uh, almost worked out a little bit poorly for him. Derp trying to get another pick. Now, CJ pushes in, does take 25 of his health. Ooh, but Derp will be too slow. CJ will keep pushing up. We'll get the trade back. So you're now at a 4v4 with, with health advantage actually in the favor of Michigan Tech. Now you have three of the four players currently sitting, the, all four of the players sitting on the south side of the map. No push coming from the back side, but there's actually no one involved. However, Bucket is kind of just chilling off on his own, just making sure there's no one pushing over. Very aggressive play from Snappy here, making sure no one comes in. He's holding that very tight with the shotgun. Bucket will get Biggie though. Not sure where that kill was, if that was through the door. But, uh, you know, it's now a man advantage up for Kettering once again. All players playing on site. The attack trying to figure out if they're going to come from the classical hall or if they're going to come from study. Snappy may get a pick here if he's, if he's patient enough on to the Nomad of CJ. CJ wants to push this very bad. Esquire actually going to go for maybe an ace onto the wall. Can't decide just yet. Red is going to try to flank through Bust. CJ very worried about another flank inside on Master. I actually think he might have been able to see the foot of Snappy there. Snappy still holding this very tight with a shotgun. But will get traded by Red. However, Anomaly will kill CJ. So it is still a man advantage in favor of Anomaly. 2v3. Anomaly holding that door. What a shot from Anomaly onto the Squire. It's now all up to Red in a 1v3. They're getting very aggressive onto him. Baka will get the kill onto Red. Finally, his aggression pays off. Kettering taking a fourth round in their defense half. Michigan Tech really needs to get their game up on their on their attack if they want to go into the defense round with a four with a two-four split. Back to the tertiary site we go. Back to dining room kitchen. Papa P not even scared. He's gonna show the pulse because they know they're gonna have to go there. The frost currently coming out from Bucca. Maybe it'll be six pick to a smoke as he showed before the frost pick, but that is unknown. We will have to wait and see. It will not. It's been locked in. All the defenders locked in, waiting on the Ash of Red to lock in as well. However, uh, I say that six onto an Ella of all operators off of the frost, trading out one shield for another. Uh, one gun for a, another arguably better, bombs. arguably worse. Definitely has more bullets though. And a higher fire rate, just with a little bit more recoil. Actually, Bucka opting to bring FO12, not the Evo Scorpion. Uh, very interesting place. So you do not have potentially 
Yeah, yeah, you have two shotguns, I'm assuming, now on the lineup of Kidder and University. One with the Mute, one with the Ella. As I do not believe the Pulse is going to be running a shotgun either. Uh, it's already been shown that Anomaly has not run the shotgun. Overall, looks like a pretty similar defense to what they ran last time. Reinforcements are all the same. I like this shield uh, where it's been, it's been repositioned to where it was last time. Last time you had a Goyo. Uh, no Goyo coming out for dirt this time. Uh, but there will be a shield placed by Bucca in that doorway just to hold. Okay, you have Red running around the side of the map. Maybe trying to go in. Over on the Reloading. blood side, but he will opt out for now just to wait. Attackers have located a bomb. Meanwhile, you have your sledge and your nomads trying to sneak outside a laundry. Sledge needs to be real careful. Biggie last time got picked off first and it led Michigan Tech not to be able to do any sort of vertical control, which it looks like they're still opting not to go for the top, but they will try to go in the basement perhaps. Uh, if, I'm if I'm Michigan Tech, I'm really not so sure about this play. I do believe that your Sledge of Biggie really needs to get up to the top floor, and they need to get the control uh, and open up the floors. Interesting, Buck is playing very aggressive uh, over inside of Study, just trying to get a pick, but he will end up dropping out of Study. But he will maybe go for another peek. He will get immediately fried off of that peek by CJ. Good awareness coming out from Michigan Tech, being ready for a peak coming out. A bomb has been Bucca located. off the board, and a, a good shotgun off the board as well. Now this is where the adaptation that we needed to see Michigan Tech going for that top floor control that they did not have last time they attacked this bomb site. However, it, Red was just in sight. Very interesting play. Uh, Red and Biggie both dead now. Again, your sledge is down. But he wasn't even upstairs. Once again, he was in the nine, the Z Hall, uh, first floor instead of opening up the floor. Uh, if I'm Michigan Tech, I'm wondering why my sledge isn't in the top floor opening up vertical holes. Because you don't have any person capable besides a Selma charge, but that is very a big waste of utility. But you have no way of opening up top down. CJ now being spotted out on the clock. Flashback He's going to try to just entry in. Maybe, maybe not. TKLV does take out Derp, so it's now a 3v3 at least. Very even uh, man count, but Snappy will get a shot or two on the CJ. Meanwhile, looks like MTU has just completely given up. They are going to just send it into Memo. Pulse gets one, cannot get another. CJ with the with the trade and the pick on the Snappy. Now all up to Anomaly. Looks like... Looks like Michigan Tech will get their second left. round on dining once again. Another round that they don't look like they really should be winning. Are activating the diffuser. Very, uh, very confusing execution from Michigan Tech, but it looks like it's working so far, at least on the dining side. Maybe not anywhere else, but the dining side is where they've been successful once before. Where it looks like they will be successful once again. Anomaly in the 1v2. Bomb is down. He doesn't have a lot of time to work with. Squire and CJ doing what they can. Anomaly, they're playing Ring Around the Rosie right now unless they're aware of it. One kill for Anomaly. Will he get the second one? He will not get the second one. Esquire will get the kill. Michigan Tech close out their second round of the half. Desperately needed by them. We'll now go into the defense half, hoping to look a little bit stronger than what they showed on their attack. Kettering playing their defense on Villa. Very aggressive, uh, not the most aggressive I've ever seen, but they're definitely playing it. Uh, they, they definitely are not just like giving up ground. They want to fight for it. They're making, uh, they were they were making Michigan Tech fight tooth and nail for every inch of the map that they wanted to get. But now we have the the side switch. Michigan Tech will be moving onto the defense, heading over to Aviator first. Uh, and the Mozzie again being brought out by both teams this map. Red playing on that Mozzie. It'd be interesting to see if he opts, opts for the Roni or if he opts for that Commando. Given his playstyle, I would honestly assume Red opting for the uh, Roni. Uh, once again, uh, we have some great commentary Defenders coming out from a train from once again tonight. Uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, the Commando actually coming out from Red. Uh, honestly, it makes sense. Red likes to get in his engagements. Uh, if he does not have those, those bullets, uh, probably will not win 
but with the high fire rate that the Lorraine has with such a small magazine, uh, it's very vulnerable to whiffing and then losing her gunfight because he doesn't have enough bullets. A Valk coming out for what I believe to be the first time this map, if not the first time this series. Uh, the Valk cam is going to be very important in gathering intel for the defense of Michigan Tech. Uh, and Michigan Tech on, on the back foot here, but they are on their preferred half. Hoping to get the win on this map and close it out 2-0. We're now into the rounds as we see Kettering get onto the field. Did not the ace of anomaly looks like all by him almost all by himself on one side of the map it looks like he is uh does look like it will be a master side take for the defense or for the attack kettering making sure uh wanting to get into the map where they can see what they can do drone coming out from the maverick of papa p telling him can i hop in am i good to go Derp will be pushing in now on the back of that drone. Is a Dossie Pest on that door, I believe, so Derp may just hold that, wait for someone to cross. You cannot see the Mozzie Pest immediately, so he will just kind of chill here. They are aware there's someone in trophy, and Derp is just going to hold. Ooh, Bob, almost a quick amount for Derp there. Oh, really unfortunate there for Derp, as he will get traded out by, killed by CJ. CJ with the opening pick for this round. CJ doing a lot of work on this map, where it was red last game. CJ's doing the work this game. 10 kills already for CJ, going into round number seven. CJ holding down the fort on the master side. What a shot from CJ. Snappy off the reverse repel. He will not be joining us in this round much longer uh, at all. Now a 5v3 in favor of Michigan Tech. This is exactly what they need to, to start out their attack half. Red waiting for this map of Papa P to peek his head, and there he goes. Papa P in the dirt. Red trying to get back some more kills. Wants to play like last map again. Do have a 5v2 advantage. Both players of the attack uh, now on the study side. Ace on the window. IQ below inside of the art vault. Just trying to get a little bit more intel below before Ace pushes in. Ace will get the wall open. Looking towards vault. Uh, just have a little bit of an angle trying to get across established. IQ still below needs to come join ace she's still looking for some gadgets but Kettering is stalling out now what a through the floor valk on her cams bucka will take advantage of that using that gadget scanner we'll get the frag onto bucka or onto biggie rather shot from esquire missing the target bucka bringing it now to a 2v3 but a flank is coming out now from red. We'll get the kill on the bucket. Now all up to Anomaly in a 1v3. Anomaly will get the kill on the red, but will not get the kill. Will not get any more as CJ will peek him through the breach with a pistol to end out round number seven. Michigan Tech bringing it back one round at a time. First round on their defense is successful. 3-4 in favor of Kettering. Great work from MTU coming out that round. First defense, very successful for them. A uh, lot of opening picks, or a lot of opening picks coming out in favor of Michigan Tech. Uh, just not being, just unable to be traded back by Kettering. Trophy and Saturday will be on our next site. I'm interested to see where these castles are opted to be placed uh, for Trophy Saturday defense. I've seen a few different setups, but I really want to see what they decide to do. Interesting enough, a bandit will be coming out for the first time tonight. Uh, no Cade. Uh, I do believe that Red bomb. just wants to have that MP7 and frag oh some God, more. No. Try to get back into some more killing potential. CJ doing a lot of work for the team this game once again. Like I said last round, 12 and 5 so far throughout the match. Uh, Michigan Tech really on the back of CJ this game. Uh, as CJ did a lot. CJ obviously having not read the uh wow cj not have reading the patch notes as a uh, that was announced uh, at the beginning of the season if i remember correctly uh valk has not had a shield or uh not had a shield in uh about a month but they will run her anyways 
Uh, have two C4s coming out with two proxes. And a couple sets of barbed wire coming out from the defense. A lot of potential for some below play by the defense. And it looks like that's what... Looks like what uh, TKLV is going to do. He's going to play the Valk below. Try to C4. Uh, maybe the A says he tries to go for the wall. But, you know, I like... Where are those castles? So you got one on the master door. Or on the closet door, rather. You have... This castle still... Castle actually still has two castles in his pocket, interesting enough. I'm not really sure if I would want to bring a castle for just one castle barricade. But that is all up to them, so... But right now, Dirt getting very aggressive. Seeing the... Oh, wow. Going for a very aggressive push on the back of the Yana clone. However, CJ will just be there. He will just be better. CJ will get the pick onto the Zofia. Zofia is no more. Yana clone saw the person in bust, but CJ was ready for the pinch. And now they have to be aware because there is a bandit of red below. I think Papa B is aware of that. Bandit, the red, uh, the red, Bandit of Red will just fall back now to Art, but he is gonna lurk. He is gonna try to get a flank off later in the round, but he will have to deal with that air jab that is on top of the stairs. Meanwhile, Yana Clone is gonna send out some more information. Being affected by the meat jammers is gonna try to run into sight. We'll get muted. Not get much more info other than that. Ash of Bucka will get a kill on the Esquire as the castle down without putting any more barricades up, but will immediately get traded out by CJ. CJ on a tear this game, 14 and 5, as he waits for more of Kettering to just walk into his crosshairs. Esquire on cam for the Valk. CJ getting ready to go for it. CJ swings when the C4 comes out a little bit late, but CJ will get the kill onto Anomaly. That is bombed down inside a Master. Both of your attackers are still top landing with 55 seconds left in the round is not looking great for Kettering they're gonna have to do some very quick work uh, and very very effective work in win winning their gunfights if they want to win this round but at the time being it does not look like that is the case they're really just stalling out, out. they have no info all four they have all four of their drones individually but they don't really have anything to do with them and now red has back has begun to back up CJ inside the master bedroom as they try to hold down this bomb a little bit longer. 20 seconds left on the clock, and the attackers have not really moved at all. Swapping uh, they're still in basically the same place. Uh, then really not much they can do other than just swing and throw their lives away. Ten seconds to go. CJ will get pop up, but Snappy will get big. He's now a three v one. Snappy has about. Three seconds left. Defender has been discovered. Snappy aware that, that uh, the Jaeger of Operated Biggie is outside, or the Jaeger of CJ is outside rather, uh, but he will not be able to get the kill. There's not enough time left in the round. Michigan Tech tying it up 4-4. Two really solid defense rounds coming up from them. Moving on to their tertiary site of dining room and kitchen. Uh, they've got to be they've got to be in good spirits after those two rounds. They're doing they're doing very well. Uh, they're playing very well together. Seems like a very strongly defender-sided Villa. Uh, even with the uh, Alibi ban, uh, as Red does not have his preferred operator. Red will be sixing onto the Bandit once again. Likes that MP7, wants to run it again. Uh, I like that pick because I like that six because you didn't really have any wall denial before, but now you have some bandits just Attackers to put on that laundry wall. Just to make sure they can't open it immediately. They have to do a little bit of work to get this wall open. Castle coming out once again, making sure Kettering doesn't try to try to rush in through laundry. Uh, I like that get, making them waste a little bit of utility to try to get in. There will be a, a upstairs defense hold by Michigan Tech, it appears. Be interesting to see the attack strat coming out from Kettering. Speaking of Kettering, they brought a buck. That is the first buck of the night. Not to mention, buck showing off his shiny new hard breach gadget. Gotten the last patch this week. Uh, buck now has that hard breach gadget to try to open up a little bit of uh, reinforced walls. May try to open up the laundry wall. He may try to open up, you know, maybe some of this master wall, but he has it and he can do a vertical destruction with that uh, skeleton key, as well as opening up a few, a couple walls. 
Ace their primary hard breacher will still be coming out. Goyo shields coming out on each side of the map. One Goyo shield coming out facing that laundry door. Uh, the other one, didn't really see where that got placed. Might have been upstairs, perhaps. Maybe not. Maybe I am crazy. Uh, is very much the case. Not like, once again, not like, sure where that shield went out. But does it look like... Red will take a lot of early damage from an engagement from Dirt. He's, Red is very much stuck in this position now. Dirt just waiting to swing. Speaking of Dirt, he will get swung by Red. Red actually not in a bad position at all. He goes the, for the aggression. Will in fact get the kill on the Dirt. Good opening pick from Red. He's very low HP though. Uh, he will most likely be playing for either another kill or his death. Buck playing very close. I don't know if they exactly realize it, but Jaeger, the Jaeger. Well, I think Red actually got the down. Uh, it's just not all out breakfast for Kettering right now through Attacker the floor. The Multiple kills coming out for Kettering onto Attacker Red, onto CJ. The Both their top riders down off the, off the board. Public K picked up back up for 20 HP. Biggie's going to have to do a lot of work this round if he wants his team to stay ahead, get his first kill. But with a minute 20 left in the round, Kettering has a lot of above control. Currently opening up as much as they can, getting ready to go for an execute onto the memo, onto the memo walls, onto the laundry walls. And the wall being opened by the ash of Bucca. Bucca now shooting through the floor. Takes a bit of damage from my believe the Goyo. TKLV will take out Papa, but will be immediately traded back by Bucca. It's now a 2v3. Bucca finding the Valcam. Now going for a little bit of destruction above the dining, above the kitchen. With the ace now firmly in control of the of the Tetris uh, plant area. Uh, your dining room is now opened up in from the laundry room. 38 seconds left. About the time to go for an execute. However, the Goyo of Esquire is still sitting inside of Memo. But he has been spotted out by the attack. He will be in a lot of trouble here if he cannot move. Nappy, understanding that, will drop over the wall of upstairs and will try to find this out. Biggie getting his first kill will take out Bucca. Anomaly now needing to push in through his smokes. But Snappy will take out Bucca. It's now all up to a squire. Bullets will not connect. Pistols out for both Snappy and the squire, but Snappy will win the gunfight. Kettering will win their first round on attack. Going up 5-4. Very desperately need a round for Kettering if they wanted to stay in this game. Michigan Tech playing that as best as they could. Red getting a very good opening pick, but he was extremely low health, so he couldn't do much afterwards. Uh, but he did what he could, uh, and unfortunately he and CJ got pinched out on the top floor. Uh weren't playing the closest they got they both got got and then as soon as that happened it allowed Kettering to start opening up all of the ceiling above the dining room kitchen and it put the, uh, put the, the rest of the defenders in Michigan Tech in a bombs. very poor position back to a meter games we go Michigan Tech trying to even it up 5-5 again one even up 5-5 so they can get up to a 6-5 on statuary and then they're, they're going to have to figure out how to close it without overtime. Because they, I'm telling you, Michigan Tech going to want to close this out. If you give Kettering a chance to come back, they will. You don't want to be in that position. But the Valkyrie is still coming out for Michigan Tech. They like those cams. Uh, they're proving very useful, actually. Um, but once again, Red playing on his Mozzie. Already got one drone. He's going to set it up in the bathroom just to watch for a push that comes through. Already down Attackers one drone for Kettering, but that has that has not did not stop him last round. Uh, may not stop him this round. Very spread out roam. Got three side players and you have two roamers playing. Well, I guess they're not as spread out as you know. I would I was originally saying. Wow, CJ playing very aggressive on this Astro window, trying to get an early pick. Will not happen though. He will fall back. He actually falls all the way back down to jungle. Now going back up red to try to flank back around through into statue. Meanwhile, the attack is entering into the master closet. 
this ash of Vodka doing as much as he can, trying to clear as fast as he can. Bomb they, located you by are aware it's Aviator Games. Defense. Now, all the way pushed up to top red. Yonaklon will be clearing a little bit more. They do have north side control. However, this mozzie of red is biding his time sitting on those brick stairs. Control all the way up to 90 for the attack of Kettering. Uh, a lot of ground taken in a very short amount of time. Very a good for Kettering. Uh, but however, they are going to have to work and execute if they want. Mozzie of red being hit by an air jump, but I don't think there is anyone. Well, you know, maybe Anomaly is there to catch it out, but he's not there anymore because they are aware that he ran. He probably ran away. But now red is free to flank as much as he wants. However, I do believe this nomad. Nomad was going to hold red, rotate, but decides to fall off at the last minute. Red now at that mud window. There's a lot of gunfire coming out. Derp with the opening pick onto TKLV, but will fall off immediately. CJ with the refrag onto Bucca. Trade's coming out. Now 4v4 with 50, 58 seconds left to go in the round. Yana Clone comes in to try to get a little bit more intel. And Snappy will get Esquire. Plus CJ will once again trade onto Papa. CJ doing a lot of work in this in this game. 18 and 6 so far. He's gonna try to go for another one. We'll get the third. On to Derp. However, this attack does have to sight. We'll get the fourth under Anomaly. He's up for the ace. He will get the ace. CJ putting MTU on his back. Wow. What a game from CJ. CJ playing out of his mind here on Villa. He is now up to, I believe, what is that? 21 kills so far. You have a round one ace from Papa. A round 10 ace from CJ. Wow, that's talent. CJ and Red playing out of their minds tonight. But CJ, wow, just another story completely. Back to Trophy Statuary. Go. Back to Trophy Statuary, we will be going as Michigan Tech looking to get onto match point and series point here. Derp actually being out a gridlock for the first time this series. They want to get some more flank watch coming on. Uh, since the last few rounds, they have really not been able to hold flanks too well. They have some air jabs, but they need a little bit more. So they're going to bring the gridlock on top of that. Make a lot more noise trying to flank. Uh, just overall trying to prevent getting... Uh, Five they just try to have left. their backs covered a little bit more. Attackers must locate and defuse a bomb. Attackers uh, we have a lot of the attack coming from Attackers this study side. It looks like it will be a south to north take. Maybe not necessarily a master take like last time. That didn't really work out too well for him. But you are going to see the Ash of Bucca get ready to enter. We'll be droning. A lot of droning going on. For Kettering, they want to be able to try to get on the. They want to get on the match point before Michigan Tech, because they want to bring it to map three so they can have a chance to win. Mozzie will get a drone as you heard there. Uh, he kind of now has his own. It will be the one from top main. Got a clone coming out to drone. Prep C4 won't get anything. He'll do a little bit of damage on the dirt, but that's about it. Meanwhile, it's just like a full four court press here. CJ very very aggressive, but will not get the opening pick anomaly. Instead, shutting him down in this round. However, Bucca has been down, but Derp will get the trade. So, Red and CJ both down. Very unfortunate for the defense. Two early picks, but you've got two attackers to sub-25 and another to sub-75. However, that is not enough because, as everyone knows, if you have a gun in your hands and you are up, you can clutch a 1v5. Attackers have located a bomb. So the attack will continue on, pressing up towards landing. Lucy of TKLV playing very aggressive here in this corner, but that will probably will not work as the ace will ace of anomaly will get a second kill on the round. TKLV dead. Catering really wanting to get on a match point here to avoid overtime where they can 
take it to Oregon. Activating Selma. Very interesting. Ace charge heading the master from the statue side. This Valka Biggie in a very unfortunate place. Plant's actually coming out now. Esquire down by Snappy. Only one more kill left. And Snappy will push in and get the double. Flawless round coming out from Kettering. Kettering up to match points. Chicken Tech now going to try to bring this to overtime. They want to close it out in two. They prefer not to go to a map three. Kettering though, they're going to push hard and push fast. They want map three. They want Oregon. They don't want to lose. R6 Collegiate, thank you for the raid. I appreciate that. I hope the games on that channel were good tonight. We are now on the very end of map two. Hopefully, uh, we might see a map three here tonight. CJ currently at 21 kills with 7 deaths. Next highest is Red with 7. Red MVP of map number 1 with, I believe, 16 kills. But CJ has blown him out of the water this map. CJ doing a lot of work for Michigan Tech. He's going to want to bring it to overtime so they can close it out. Because the third, if, after losing, I, regardless, losing this map for Michigan Tech would be heartbreaking. Especially after CJ's performance. Uh, but it would be very amazing if you are uh, Papa. Could Papa get in his ace in round one? He's going to want to win this map. Make sure it's not all for nothing. Ten seconds remaining. But really, really good play coming out from both teams here tonight so far. Uh, be a shame if it were to end in two maps. Attackers must locate and defuse a bomb. Once again, back to Trophy Statuary. Do an extended hold here in Aviator and Games. The attack will be coming from the study side once again. All five spawn in here. It's going to be a full court press from the study. Jaeger of CJ. He's going to try to play a very aggressive inside of study. Hoping he doesn't get droned. Uh, I do believe though he, he has he has been found out. There are now two and a Yana clone on top of him. He's got to be very careful here. We'll get the opening kill on the dirt. We'll get a second on the snappy. Wow, great picks already. We'll get the we'll not get the third on to pop up but tklv will take out bucka we are now in a 4v2 red playing very aggressive here on the top of the main stairs which waiting for anomaly or papa to walk in cj doing very big plays here in this round to open this up malusi currently playing on the top of the red stairs but meanwhile your attack still wants to try to push in study, but they're going to have to deal with red right here. Papa getting ready for a nade. Goes for the nade. Nade will not connect. Red has fallen back to 90. Reloading ammo. Meanwhile, the attack is pushing into study. Just to try to get a little bit of ground with a minute 40 left. They're not in the best position. Red's still playing bust now. He's just waiting for a push into AV. Minute 25 left on the clock. Both attackers are on drone. And the defense, they're just going to kind of chill. Red has been spotted out. He's actually going to push deeper into AV. Just waiting to get swung by Anomaly. Anomaly, not exactly sure if he knows where Red is. I don't think he's aware. He is not. Red will get the kill. He's now a 4v1 all up to Papa. Can he do it all once again? Accidentally sends out the Yana clone. Doesn't exactly die, but he does lose the kill. It does lose the chance to get the kill onto red. Nade coming out. Attackers we'll get ADS. No more nades on Papa. Red wanting that final kill. But Michigan Tech knows all they have to do is just chill. They don't need to swing. They just have to hold angles and they can bring it to overtime. Red with the hip fire. When trying to stand back up from the prone, uh, reverse drop shot as we like to call that, uh, we'll finish off round number 12. We are now into overtime. Chicken Tech will, will be on the attack for overtime. Starting off, it is Kettering's map pick. Be very interesting to see how this first attack round goes. Kettering in the driver's seat for this overtime. They do get the two uh, defense rounds. 
so they should be favored to come out of this on top. Bucka, once again, going on to the Ella, uh, just like we saw in his final round of the first half. Bringing the Ella for the shield, for the frost, for the shield. Then we have two Goyo shields, four shields coming out from Kettering. Defenders, protect your bombs from being defused Back by attackers. to Trophy Statuary we go. We will see these two teams battle out in a best of three rounds for the map. Michigan Tech wanting to win it all, win it all here. They don't want to. They want to avoid a map three. They want to just end it all. Kettering, they're gonna be stubborn. They want to. They want to pull up the distance. They want the win to come out. DJ on 23 kills. Biggie yet to really find much of contribution to the board. Uh, if if Michigan Tech wants to win this attack, I feel he needs to show up big here in overtime. Ten seconds to insertion. But just like the last three rounds have been. Extended hold from Trophy Statuary. Players playing over in Aviator Games. No reinforcements dedicated to the side like Michigan Tech was doing, but you do have the Frost of Papa and the Goyo of Dirt playing over here. As I say that, however, they're going to make me look like a fool. They're going to start reinforcing. Four reinforcements dedicated over here, not zero. But this Goyo of Dirt wants to play a little aggressive, however. CJ is playing that reverse repel and Derp decides, oh, I won't peek that just yet. One drone down, Derp shoots one. And the Derp and Derp and Papa P just kind of chilling over in Aviator Games, waiting for the player for the attackers to come to them. Another drone down for the attack. Meanwhile, the next drone is currently droning Classical Hall. Looks like that will be where the push primarily tries to come from, but you do have the frost of Papa P. Playing in here with the reflex, not the 1.5. Papa P will get CJ. Poor drone work coming out from Michigan Tech. So your top fragger off the board. Very good pick from Papa. Very good opening pick. Maverick of TKLV waiting for the cross of the Goyo of Dirt. It looks like they're going to try to... He and the Ash of Red are going to try to pinch out this Goyo. Goyo on the Frost playing very aggressive here. Frost actually moving into 90. Looks like Goyo is going to try to fall back. He knows this is a dangerous game. He will actually get the kill on this. Esquire is now at 3v5. Kettering on the up, on the up foot. Papa will add on to that. It's now a 2v5 in favor of Kettering University. This Ash not watching her back. Mega swung from behind by the Goyo. In fact, that's exactly what will happen. Dirk will take out Red. All up to Biggie in the 1v5. Flawless round coming out from Kettering in round number 13. Kettering now on match point, ready to take it to map three. Michigan Tech gonna wanna win out these next couple rounds to end it all here. Aviator Games coming out from Michigan Tech for their only defensive round of overtime on Villa. Now be seeing the Derp will still bring out the Gridlock. The Gridlock was working for them that one round for Flank Watch. It allows them to do a little bit more uh, covering of their backs than just the Nomad Charges. Bucka will switch off the Ash to the Zofia. So you have one entry for another, but Zofia does have that 2.0 uh, where Ash does not. Attackers need to locate and defuse bombs. Michigan Tech going for pretty much the same lineup that they've been running for this site the whole match. Uh, and Kettering, uh, they've changed their attack up a little bit throughout the game, uh, but they do like they like their consistent Nomad, uh, Ace, and Yana. It's really only the Zofia and the Gridlock kind of alter the rest of this game. Does look like it will most likely be a will have partially a back push. You have three drones on the backside from the attack. Maybe a master side push primarily with a secondary presence on the study balcony put, trying to push in. Just to try to pinch out this AV door. Attackers must locate and defuse the bomb. Do you have three of your attackers spawning on the master side with your other two spawning? Oh, you have you, once again you have you have your ace at least spawning on your study side, and I'm assuming 
Uh, it's your Nomad spawning on the Astro side. CJ full white now as he gets hit with a flashbang. He's going to try to be very aggressive on this Nomad, but the Nomad of Snappy is waiting for him to move because I believe he does know he sees the gun barrel. Knows he's there. Has to be trapped in the corner, but CJ will escape to live another day. Entry now into Master for the Zofia Bucca. He is waiting. He's waiting to see if the drones find anything upstairs. He wants to try to make sure he doesn't miss anything. Mazi does get one drone. It's being followed by the drone of of Kettering. Meanwhile, Zofia Bucca will move up into concrete while he awaits the finalized drone of top red. All five members, at least all four four members of Kettering, minus the ace, is still droning from the city balcony. Bucca now top red. Pinging the drone with the new ping 2.0 system to make sure that it's actually one of theirs. Gonna set up a flank drone, it appears. Your attack will do what they can to try to pressure out from the flank. Red is still on the flank though, he's going to be very interesting to watch. They do have some gridlock track stingers on the bottom of the Astro stairs, so you want to be careful of that. But, but, Kettering will need to be very careful with only a minute 18 left. It's still a 5v5, this could get very bloody very quick. TK, TKLB will get a little bit of damage onto Derp through the drone hole there. A C4 goes off, not catching anything, but now... The attack does have control of 90, but they don't have anything to open as their ace is still sitting on study window. Nomad now being pushing up to top red, trying to get a thing on, but Esquire will get the opening pick onto Snappy. He's now just going to sit pro behind the couch. Meanwhile, the attack is a little crunchy. TKLV will get a kill onto a non the drone hole. Is he going to get a second one? He is going to get a second one, and Biggie's going to get a third. It's now all up to Bucka, but he will not lose. He will lose his life, rather. Michigan Tech answers, up, answers that with a flawless round of their own. We are now going to overtime match point. We're going the full 15 rounds here on Villa. After the stomp that Michigan Tech had over Kettering on Cafe, I don't think anyone was really expecting this map to go to 15 rounds. But Kittering will be on the defense for the final overtime round. Hoping they can pull it out, bring it to map three. Michigan Tech gonna try to adjust what they're doing to make sure that doesn't happen. Interesting enough, a Rook pick coming out from Kettering. Is it gonna be stuck? That is the question of the night. All the attack has locked in. So you're gonna see a Thermite now coming out from Michigan Tech and it looks like Rook will be stuck. Having that 2.0, Kettering wants to simply frag out this round, make sure nothing happens that's going to cause them to lose this round. They want map 3. I think we all want to see a map 3 between these two teams, because if, if map 3 is anything to go off of this map, we're going to see a banger of a game of Oregon. Biggie has uh, now doubled his uh, his contributions to the team uh, over the last 15 rounds uh, in the last couple of rounds. Over time, Biggie got one more kill. Uh, that is one more than he had gotten, you know, over the last. Well. Attackers now spawning into the server. Four of your five attackers will be coming onto the study side. Be interesting to see what their approach is. Michigan Tech needs to make something work this round if they want to win it here. But they are going to have to worry about the Cade Claws. Are the Cade Claws or the kids? We got the one, you have one indestructible one here on that bookshelf. Uh, you can't really shoot that from below. It's not necessarily indestructible, uh, but it's going to be a lot harder to clear. Your other one, it's going to be on the wall, I do believe. Yes, it looks like it's at the bottom of that wall. But you do have the bubble here in study again, just to try to zap some thermites, get some HP. No one really, you have the Jaeger of, of uh, Bucca holding from this top of main stairs. Will fall off after getting pressed by CJ. 
So you're taking a little bit of damage from that bubble. C4 ripped actually. A bomb has been located. But red will get the opening kill. C4 actually, I believe, was he was it shot perhaps? But red will get the opening pick on to the roof of dirt. Two C4s out. No more C4s remaining. But it looks like TKLV will want to get a nade over this wall. Eighty electric lock gone off of the wall here. Thermite will be able to come in and get it. They want to make sure there's no one below. There actually is no one below right now. They can actually get this wall open for a free. Thermite charge successful by es Esquire. Now a 5v4 with a minute 20 left. Bar wall is open. If you're a defender, you're, you're not feeling too confident right now. Meanwhile, Bucka may be trying to flank. Not exactly sure what he's doing. Uh, he's just kind of vibing in the master bedroom right now. Papa Pete trying to do some sprays. Gonna have to fall back because of a grenade. Cannot hit the shots he needs. CJ lit up very harshly. Shot from below down to 20 HP. He's actually down now from below from the IQ. But the attack is not exactly aware of this. But TLV is gonna push in. Die from the Cade inside a vault. Now a four a technical 4v3 for the attack. As the Maestro is not in a position where he can't be picked up. Bucca is holding from the bust. The trade coming out from CJ. The new playing a big role here. However, he will get traded off by Esquire. There's now a technical 2v1. Biggie needs to be there to cover his teammate. They're not aware of this Cade's presence. They are now, though. And Biggie just needs to watch the door. Cade will... Cade... Or the Buck, Jaeger of Bucca will try to flank. Look at the first kill. Now all up to Esquire. And he will get the kill. 2-0 Michigan Tech. 7-2 on map 1, 8-7 on map 2. Great game coming out from both teams, but at the end of the day, Michigan Tech just simply fought harder. Hard fought victory, very true. 8-7, went the full 15 rounds. CJ on 24 kills. He's doing his, he was doing his best to make sure his team could do theirs. We'll have an interview with CJ, I believe, of Michigan Tech right after this. CJ, come to the Face It Discord. Uh, I am in one of the OBS channels. the interview i'm just doing a quick break on the stream we will be back after that so i will introduce you and then i will ask you a few questions and, and we'll be good VOD uploaded tonight. Uh, hopefully it shouldn't take too long to upload and get it processed. And I can uh, send y'all a link for it if you want it. We're going to ignore the fact that I didn't have the uh, the game audio running through stream uh, for the first three minutes, uh, nor my mic audio. For the th first three rounds, rather. So... <laughs> and I was, uh, you know, we were starting round three and saw in chat, turn on the game audio. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> I was like, fuck, I forgot, knew I was gonna forget something. Hey man, I'm, I'm doing it all. I'm producing, I'm spectating, I'm casting. Like, gotta, gotta cut me a little bit of slack here, you know?
Welcome back, everyone. We had a great game here tonight. Michigan Tech taking the 2-0 over Kettering. 7-2 on Cafe, 8-7 on Villa. I am joined here by CJ. CJ, how are you feeling tonight after that game? Uh, Pretty extremely hot from how much I'm overheating, but pretty high for how it was. Now, you uh, you played extremely well on that second map, dropping, what, 24 kills, I believe? Uh, really backing up red after map one. He needed a little bit of a break. Uh, you sure stepped up and, uh, and filled that void for your team when they needed you most. Yeah, so there's a saying when it comes between me and red. It's when red's not performing, I'm performing. When I'm performing, or when I'm not performing, red's performing. And that was really shown throughout these two maps. Uh, it, was, it was greatly shown. Red was, you know, backing up a little bit when you need when he, when he, when you needed him. Uh, but overall, I mean, that ace in round 10 was incredible. Uh, great job on that. Uh, how did y'all feel after round one when Papa got his 1v4 ace clutch? Did that really, like, oh, it would, how, did, how did that make y'all feel? It, there was a lot of miscommunication on our part, and it kind of tore us down because we knew we could have done better. But we decided to say, okay, that round happened. Let's look to the new rounds. Yeah, uh, you know, y'all y'all managed to come back. You know, you were down 2-4 at the half, but that, you didn't let that stop y'all. Uh, you're attacking, and you brought it back round after round. You know, every single every single uh, round on Kitchen, uh, no matter what team was playing, uh, the defenders lost. So it was just, the, you know, showing how that map works, the tertiary site, not as strong as the two primary sites. Uh, so after that, you know, you currently rank, you know, around 4 or 5 in the uh, power rankings between uh, Face It and the Dirt Report. Um... How y'all how y'all feeling that your team's progressing this season so far? I think we're doing as good as uh, we hoped out to be doing. I know our our matches and face it um, before this match weren't um, extremely difficult to our like standards, but we're performing really well to our standards, I believe. It's good to hear. I'm excited to see y'all keep going throughout the rest of the season. Uh, is this, it is a Swiss bracket, so I'm not exactly sure who you'll be playing next week. But you will be facing another winner. Uh, does bring you? Is, are you three and zero on the season now, or are you two and one? Three and zero. Three and zero. You'll be facing another three and zero team next week. Uh, thank you for your time tonight. Congratulations on the win. I'll be excited to see who y'all face next week. Thank you. All right. All right. That is it, everyone. Thank you for coming out to our match today. Uh, I will be back, it looks like, Wednesday casting UCSD versus NAU, perhaps. Uh, so keep your eyes on Twitter for that. Uh, thank you all to Face It. Big shout out to Face It for letting me cast some of these matches. Uh, it really means a lot. Um, you know, I started last week off in the Recreational League with the UNT versus Drexel match. This week I'm up uh, casting Michigan Tech and Kettering. Uh, it's just very surreal. Oh, thank you for them uh, for allowing me to uh, broadcast these uh Congrats to Michigan Tech for winning the match tonight. Good night.